In Mattel's 2000 annual report, new CEO Robert Eckert starts his review by addressing the shareholders and presenting them with the one-word concept, refocus. Our new vision refocuses Mattel on its core business, toys, its core competency, building brands, its opportunity for global growth, and its leadership position with children and their parents. The first point to tackle is, obviously, the catastrophic issues with the learning company which Eckert calls not a good fit with Mattel. With the reassurance of the problem mitigation as the learning company is now sold and out of Mattel's to-do list, kind of, if we disregard the lawsuits, Eckert is happy to announce a new partnership that concerns the future of Barbie video games. Vivendi is supposed to provide software development and distribution expertise. Switching to licensing agreements, the partnership would enable Mattel to improve earnings as royalties grew. <coughs> Few pages and jump scares. <coughs> Later in the report, Record addresses the new partnership again. The licensing agreement, announced in January 2001, is described as multi-year and worldwide. A tool for Mattel to extend their brands like never before into the gaming, educational and productivity software arenas. Between 2001 and 2005, more than 15 Barbie video games were released as the love child of this partnership. And this is considering the Barbie character only, since Vivendi also developed the universe further by launching titles such as Shelly Club, a video game released in 2002 which starred Barbie's little sister Shelly, and games for both Diva Stars and My Scenes. I have to say, Diva Stars look much like a response to Mattel's rival, MGA Entertainment's Bratz dolls. That beef, by the way, is also very juicy and we might cover it in one of our next videos, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified. Diva Stars Mall Mania was published by Vivendi Universal in North America and follows four playable dolls from the Diva Stars line through six different stages of gameplay. Released for Game Boy Color, the game received mostly negative reception for critics who felt that it was overly easy. As opposite to Diva Stars, my scenes had a more original concept and a more normal body. But yeah, the head was definitely disproportionate. But what can I tell you, it was the early 2000s and there was definitely a lot of pressure on Mattel to respond to the success of Bratz dolls. My scenes were represented by Barbie, yeah, they called her Barbie, Madison and Chelsea and their story revolved around life in the city as young adults in the internet era. Internet and mobile phones were such a focus for my scenes that they even had an online miniseries. It just isn't me, but it's totally you. Ooh, it's gonna look scorching on you. In the My Sings video game release in 2002, players helped Barbie, Chelsea and Madison plan for one of the 12 weekend events, an art show, games, nights and more. Players could also take fun quizzes and tell all tests and complete fun activities like designing chic clothes to earn extra cash. The game was developed and published by Vivendi Universal Games. Three years later, another My Scenes video game, My Scenes Go to Hollywood, will be developed and published by Vivendi Universal Interactive Publishing. Uh, wait a minute, Vivendi Universal Interactive Publishing? Vivendi Universal Games? Vivendi Games? Activision? Oh. If you are as confused as I am with all these different names combinations, buckle up. The story of Vivendi as it concerns Barbie video games is as tumultuous as corporate drama can get. We're going to check the timeline of the Barbie titles releases and explore what was boiling in the cauldron behind the scenes. Not the my scenes, Barbie's scenes. Ah, damn it, not this Barbie, this Barbie.
girl's best friend. She's been a superstar for more than 40 years. It's Barbie, starring in her first feature-length motion picture, Barbie in the Nutcracker. In 2001, Mattel launched a brand new product to complete the Barbie universe, the movie Barbie in the Nutcracker. Featuring music from Tchaikovsky's 1892 ballet The Nutcracker, it marked Barbie's first film since the 1887 television specials Barbie and the Rockers, Out of This World, and Barbie and the Sensations, Rocking Back to Earth. The film's ballet sequences feature the movement of the New York City ballet dancers computer animated through motion capture imaging. The film was animated over four months by 22 artists. And with this attention to production, it's not a surprise that the movie was the second most popular children's movie of 2001 in the United States. 2001 welcome four new Barbie video games. For Windows, Barbie Team Gymnastics, Secret Agent Barbie, Barbie Beach Vacation, and for PlayStation, Barbie Explorer. All of these games were published by Vivendi Universal Games, which started being called this way only towards the end of the year 2001. So, what was happening at Vivendi? May 16, 2001, Los Angeles-based Havas Interactive, the parent company of Sierra Blizzard Entertainment, Universal Interactive Studios and Knowledge Adventure, changed its name to Vivendi Universal Interactive Publishing. Vivendi Universal Interactive Publishing was then made up of two operating divisions, Vivendi Universal Interactive Publishing North America and Vivendi Universal Interactive Publishing International. Initially, both divisions took responsibility for their respective publishing regions, but eventually, in November the 13th, 2001, were streamlined under the name Vivendi Universal Games. These name changes, twists and turns aren't uncommon in the business world, but what's also not that unusual is that the stirring and shifting is the result of one dude's delusional midlife crisis. Meet Jean-Marie Messieur, a French businessman who took the chairmanship of the utility company Compagnie Générale des Eaux in 1994. He oversaw the diversification into the media sector and its 2000 merger with Canal Plus and Seagram, owners of Universal Studios, to form Vivendi Universal. When talking about the creation of Vivendi, Monsieur told Wired he wanted a sleek new Euro name to match his incredibly global ambitions. A name that, quote, even Americans could pronounce. So the corporate people were called in to brainstorm. Viva! Vivaldi! Vivendi! Monsieur had plans of grandeur for the colossal company he was sitting on top of, and he described Vivendi's DNA by saying Nous sommes une entreprise européenne avec de fortes racines européennes. Et cela signifie que nous avons peut-être des compétences supplémentaires. Mais si dans quelques années vous considérez Vivendi Universal comme une formidable entreprise européenne, j'aurai raté ce que je cherche. But sadly for him, the Empire Vision Monsieur had never really became a reality. Five more Barbie games were introduced in 2002. Barbie Beauty Styler, Secret Agent Barbie Royal Jewel Mission, Barbie Groovy Games, Barbie Sparkling Ice Show and Barbie as Rapunzel, a creative adventure. Although you may remember from the previous videos that Barbie Rapunzel was a title Mattel had already explored, this 2002 version is different as it comes attached to another Barbie movie adventure. With Barbie as Rapunzel, the quality and attention to details that characterized the first movie made a comeback during the nine-month production period while performances for the 15 human characters being motion captured for over 16 days. Rapunzel's paintings are real artworks by Amanda Dunbar digitally inserted into the film. The movie released one month prior to the video game in order to keep the momentum going. 
Barbie as Rapunzel and associated merchandise sales rose $200 million in 2002. But while Rapunzel was laying her hair down to escape from Gothel, someone at Vivendi was trying to escape from the law. Jean-Marie Messieur, a Sagittarius by the way, was forced to resign from his position with Vivendi in July 2002 after the company posted a non-cash loss of 13.6 billion of euros for the previous year. During his time as CEO of Vivendi, Monsieur was found to have used corporate funds to buy a $17.5 million apartment for his personal use at 515 Park Avenue at 16th Street in New York City. After he was fired, Monsieur tried to claim the apartment as part of his severance package, but was obviously rebuffed. However, it didn't leave Vivendi empty-handed, receiving $23.4 million in severance for his departure from chairman and chief executive. Messier was later put on trial in France in 2011 and was found guilty of misappropriation of company funds and divulging misleading information when he headed Vivendi. He appealed the decision and in 2014, the court overturned Monsieur's conviction on charges of misleading investors but upheld the conviction on charges of misuse of corporate funds. Wake up, babes! It's 2003 and throughout this year, five new Barbie video games will appear on the shelves. The first title on our list takes name from... Guess what? The latest Barbie animated movie, which also takes name from, guess what? A Tchaikovsky's ballet composition. Yeah, I'm talking about Barbie of Swan Lake, which was followed by Barbie of Swan Lake, the Enchanted Forest video game, which just like with Rapunzel, brought back on the computer screens the characters from the freshly released movie. You know, some may say that Mattel was milking the cow with these, but personally, as a child who adored Barbie and adored Tchaikovsky music, I must confess, I loved these movies when they came out. Next games in the pipeline were Barbie Beauty Boutique and Barbie Horse Adventures Mystery Ride, both released for Windows. Barbie Horse Adventure's Blue Ribbon Race was released for Game Boy Advance and Barbie Horse Adventure Wild Horse Rescue for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. As you can see, the Vivendi umbrella was continuing to deliver what was requested out of the partnership with Mattel. As you can imagine, what was going on behind the scenes was far distant from smooth sailing. After numerous speculations and back and forth, in 2003, Vivendi agreed a sale for its entertainment business, with the media empire being sold to General Electric in a multi-billion dollar deal. The deal saw the media assets of the company being merged with General Electric's own media division, NBC, in a move which created one of the largest media companies in the world, the new NBC Universal conglomerate. But the Vivendi Universal Games division was not part of the deal. Vivendi was holding on to this valuable asset after failing to find a separate buyer for it earlier in the year, despite early interest from parties including Microsoft and... EA Games. While still existing as Vivendi Universal Games, the company published five more Barbie titles between 2004 and 2005, two of which were, once again, following up on the release of Barbie movies. Barbie as Princess and the Pupper in 2004 and Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus in 2005. In early 2004, Mattel CEO Robert Eckert addressed the shareholders in the report on the previous year and said More than it all, Barbie is the strongest girls brand in the world. Recently, however, we have seen an unprecedented level of competition in the girls category. To regain our momentum in the doll category, this year we are going to do things differently. According to the CEO, the new mantra for Barbie 
wasn't about a multitude of different dolls, but focused on a strategy based on storytelling, enhanced with technology, and what he called age-appropriate aspiration. But the high expectations of the CEO ended up being failed, as by the end of 2005, Mattel experienced sales decreases in Barbie brand. While Mattel found itself in need for more inputs on the Barbie universe and yet another movie on their pipeline, the question for 2006 was, will the next Barbie video game be published by Vivendi Universal Games or will these guys change name yet again? By March 2006, Vivendi Universal Games announced they would drop the Universal from their name, so technically, yeah, they changed name again. However, it will take one more year for the next, more radical change. Around 2006, Vivendi CEO Jean-Bernard Lévy was contacted by Activision CEO Bobby Kotick about a possibility of a deal. Vivendi Games was struggling to be viable at the time, but its principal feature was that it owned Blizzard Entertainment and its highly successful World of Warcraft game, which was drawing $1.1 billion of dollars a year in subscription fees. Levy recognized Kodak wanted control of World of Warcraft and offered to allow the companies to merge, but only if Vivendi held the majority shares in the merge group. Kodik fretted about this decision for a while according to friends and investors, but after learning that Blizzard also had a successful inroad into getting their games in emerging market China, he agreed to the merger. Activision's board signed on to the merger by December 2007 and the process was officially completed in July 2008. The new company was called Activision Blizzard and was headed by Kodak while Vivendi maintained a 52% share in the company. Activision managed to publish nine more Barbie video games in the two years period of the merger, with the last one being Barbie and the Three Musketeers in October 2009. Curiously enough, Mattel annual reports from 2006 to 2009 barely mention any achievements with their firstborn girl and even less is shared about the status of Barbie video games. This is due mainly by the economic crisis in 2007-2008, although the data also shows a continuous interest for expansion in other brands, together with the strategy of acquiring smaller successful toy brands or intellectual properties. Although Barbie video games won't entirely disappear, the end of the first 2000s decade also means Mattel had to continue focusing on new ventures while keeping the Barbie universe simply afloat. In 2010, however, Mattel celebrated a Barbie milestone, her 125th career, and kicked off the global I Can Be campaign. For the first time, consumers around the world helped select the next career for Barbie. With more than a half million votes counted, her 125th career, selected by girls around the world, was news anchor. But consumers of all ages and genders loudly campaigned for another Barbie career, which Mattel decided to also launch. Computer engineer Barbie debuted in winter 2010 to inspire a new generation of girls to explore high-tech careers. With a three decades long history, the impact of Barbie video games in the development of thousands of people all over the world is undeniable. Although to some, all the different iterations of Barbie video games may appear boring or too easy, it's important to notice how they played a fundamental role in expanding on other aspects of the gaming experience such as creativity, beauty and empowerment. Just like many find the roleplay aspect of MMOs fundamental to their entertainment, Barbie audience was starving to play out a different fantasy. These games were one of the first approaches to video games for many users who simply thought that their interests would never be playable with mouse and keyboard. From designing fashion to styling looks, solving mysteries, practicing sports, storytelling, you name it. 
As Barbie said in the 90s, computers are cool for girls. And in 2023, this statement continues to be relevant. This deep dive process was amazing to develop and trust and believe we will go on new deep dives in the near future. If you like this mini series and you want to support this channel, feel free to hit the like button and share these videos with all of your Barbie girls. Don't forget to subscribe and join me at the Drama House, not only for deep dive episodes, but also for the silly The Sims stories. Have you checked out what's going on with the Los Amigos family? We've got three episodes about them already available on this playlist, and they're all about family and business drama. I think you'll like them.